Okay, so what I did was I went and I made three different versions of our bubble using the soft body technique I showed earlier. A small, medium, and a large bubble. And when we go to put these on our instancer, we're going to, in our creation expression, decide which bubble it's going to be. And then in our runtime expression, basically run through each instance of this geometry. So I'm going to select all my bubbles here first. And I'm just going through and make sure I don't have any group nodes selected, it's just the bubbles. And then select my particle. I want to make them instances. Okay, so we have the first of our small bubbles instancing now. So in order to get this work, we're going to have to write a couple uh, custom attributes and expressions. It's actually not too bad. We're going to, with cycle PP here, we're going to pick which bubble to use. We're going to add some rotation in Y for randomization. We're going to scale them uniformly uh, to add some more randomization. And then we're going to pick which um, index to be born with. And this is all our runtime. And in our, our creation, in our runtime, we're going to add a little bit of movement to the rotation. And then we're going to. Um, take whatever index object it was on and go to the next one over every frame. Um, keeping in mind that if we were to have a particle last longer than a hundred frames, it's going to go to the next uh, object in the list, which would be the next bubble. So the small bubble would go to the medium bubble, which would pop. But since we're, um, you know, basing this on a fish take example where they would die at the surface, no, no bubbles would ever last longer than a hundred frames. So let's go in and add all our custom attribute stuff. On our particle here. So we need cycle PP. Float per particle, orient pp, which is a vector, um, custom scale, which is also a vector, and custom index. which is a float. Okay. So in our creation expression, I'm just going to copy and paste that over and run through it a little bit more in depth. So, cycle PP, like I said before, is going to pick which bubble to use. Um, truncate here um, takes any uh, float value and clamps it down to an integer. And the reason, so it's going to get 0, 1, or 2. The reason we went to 3 is so it can get those two values to clamp down. If we left it at 2, it would only give us a return of 0 or 1, and it would never instance our large bubble. Um, in the orient, we're randomizing the Y rotation only. Um, and then we're scaling them uniform by creating a float and then assigning that to each X, Y, and Z. And then, um, if we chose the small bubble, start at index 0, which is the first instance of the small bubble. If we chose 1, which is our medium bubble, choose index 100, which is the first of our medium bubble. If we chose 2, our large bubble, choose index number 200, which is the first of our large bubble. And then in our runtime, 
I'm just going to add this because I cannot type and talk at the same time. So in our orientation, or in our rotation, we're going to take whatever it was plus this function, which for x is a sine wave, um, a little bit faster and a little bit smaller than between 0 and 1. Uh, y we're just going to leave alone, and z we're going to do a cosine, which is the inverse of sine, just to give it a little bit of wobbling rotation. And then okay, if it shows uh, 0 at birth, it's going to add 1 in the index, so it'll count up and look like it's being animated. And then for 1, uh, which is our medium bubble, it's going to do the same. But I added this, which um, uniform fields, um, they respect what mass you have assigned. So if it's less, it pushes on it more because it's you know easier to push around. So if it's bigger bubble, I'm going to lower the mass so it goes up a little faster. And this bubble's even bigger, so I lowered the mass even more. Otherwise, everything is the same. So create that. If we go into Instancer and plug everything in, so our scale is going to be custom scale. Our index will be custom index. And our rotation will be orient pp. And if I hit play and everything worked, we're picking between our small, medium, and large bubbles. Very nice. At random. And that bubble's not going up because it was not emitted in the uniform field. So we just scale it up. We'll make sure they all go up. You see the bigger ones are moving up a little faster than the smaller ones. And now, if we let this go a while, move up, we're going to watch that bubble change. Might take a bit. Actually, it just stops because there's no there's no code telling it what to do after it it reaches that frame. So they all just kind of stop moving. So we have to just keep our frame, our camera lower than um, when they would have reached the next instance. So that's pretty much it. Um, I can go through the shader with you, which was uh, shown to me by somebody I work with. Um, it's using a, men a mental ray shader, which I assign to everything. And if you check my previous videos or on my blog, you can see what this effect looks like in real time. But um, if we go to our hypershade and with any bubble selected, hit that, and this is the uh, material assigned to it. It is a mental ray um, material X passes shader, which if you click on mental ray and scroll down, it's right here. And uh, this is a really cool shader. It's got a lot of stuff in it, but my settings are just white for the color. Weight is 0.5, roughness 0.5, uh, reflection color is white, reflectivity 0.25, glossiness 0.75, samples 0.8, and refraction index is at 1.33. And that's how you can get uh, the look that I showed you earlier, which I'll bring up again. Actually, we can just do a render quick. So you can see my bubbles coming up there. And if I do a render, I have some higher quality settings on, so it might take a minute. So I'll pause until that gets done. Okay, that finished, and it looks pretty good. If I don't say so myself. So, 
you know, it's pretty simple, simple setup to get some pretty realistic bubbles. Um, the next uh, place to take this effect would be to do a crowd simulation, you know, get different characters instead of bubbles, and, uh, you know, pick which character you're using, and then, you know, make sure they're loopable, and then uh, you can set up, you know, once once it reaches the end of one cycle, it can jump to another one. So pretty complex, but also very doable. Well, I hope you enjoy this tutorial series. Uh, look forward to doing more.